In this final video with the low poly airplane, I want to point out that I've taken the plane, the struts, the propeller and nose cone and assembled them all into a group using the group tool. Once we have a group, then we can simply right click on it and hide in view. It's a lot easier to manage if we have a series of items uh, to group them up and give that group a name. So I have three boxes here all generated from the same geometry. The only distinction between them is there's some sort of difference in subdivisions of the surfaces. There's no subdivisions in the first cube. There's an equal uh, arrangement of subdivisions of six on each side in the second cube and then kind of an irregular subdivision on the final one. When it comes to smooth meshing using the NERMS tool, this variance in subdivision will cause um, a variety of outcomes. So if I select the first cube and move into the modifier stack here and find the polygon level for this geometry, um, I'll also <clears throat> move over to the subdivision surface and find the use NERM subdivision and turn that on. Um, I've already previously set this to three, so if it was one, we've seen in the past that that's gonna be more faceted and the greater number of iterations is gonna cause this to be more smooth. Okay, so this first one ends up looking somewhat like an egg or candy shape or a pill shape. And if we would do that to the others, we're going to see that each of these looks slightly different. And you'll notice that the more irregular uh, smoothing here and here is in part done by a couple of things. Now, the irregular smoothing on this, where you see it's a little bit more blunt and flat on this side and a little bit more round on the opposite side, is a function of how close the subdivisions are. In addition, we can grab the edges, the rings and loops that comprise the geometry, and we can adjust the tension on, a, on those. So this first geometry, if I go ahead and select it, and we move into the um, edge topological level of this geometry, and I grab on any one of the edges, you'll see down inside here is the projection of that cage back down onto the smooth geometry. So this is, <clears throat> in this case, we don't have enough information here, so this is um, an element of a ring and a loop, um, but you'll look down here below inside edit edges, and we see a weight and a crease. So one of the things that we can do is we can adjust the weight and the crease value that goes on any of the edges um, of a geometry. Creasing is going to cause that geometry to move closer to the cage. So increased value up to zero, between zero and one, uh, with one being the highest is going to get us touching the cage. Zero it's going to push away from the cage and weight is going to increase or decrease um, the value of that. So you see with a lower weight value, the two ver vertices that uh, make up this edge are going to come together. Um, there's nothing repelling them apart. We increase the weight on those vertices, they push away from each other and also push away from the edge of the cage. So one method that can be followed to make adjustments to a simple low poly model is to select the edges of facets uh, using the edge tool and then make adjustments to the weighting increasing. Now what happens if we have a whole series of edges that we'd like to select all at once? I'm going to grab the second volume here and we'll grab any one of these edges here in the middle. Now. Um, if you look inside the selection area, we see ring and loop. Now if I select ring, what it's going to do is grab all of the parallel segments that entirely wrap this geometry. And if we move around to the opposite side, we can see all of those are highlighted uh, in red and have been selected. Since they've all been selected simultaneously, we could then begin to make adjustments to that whole grouping. Um, and in this case to produce somewhat of a symmetrical outcome. Okay, we could also have a crease occur on each of those. So each of these are going to push up and touch the cage. So we're going to see that um, there's a bulge now in the middle, a kind of sharp bulge that comes up and touches the cage in all cases. Okay, and 
Um, on this last one, um, what I'll do is uh, select um, some segment here in the middle and I'll select the loop. And the loop is basically the perpendicular version of ring. It's going to get all contiguous segments that uh, join together, share some sort of vertex in common. And with that selected, then likewise we could increase the crease, increase the weight goes with that particular section. So thus far, as we've looked at the low poly models, we've accessed all of the tools that we would use to operate on these low poly models right through the modifier stack. So depending on the topological level selected, you'll see there's a variety of tools that are available. And in particular, the important ones are edit polygon, material and polygon IDs, the smoothing and subdivision of surfaces, and the editing of geometries. Uh, to be able to attach and detach and slice and quick slice and cut and so forth to add extra subdivisions. Make sure you take advantage of quick slice combined with the snap. So, you know, one very simple thing that can be accomplished is to select a polygon and to use an object snap that's 3D. We don't want a grid uh, snap here. We'd want, say, vertex or possibly midpoint. And um, and if we used quick slice then we could simply snap from one side of the geometry to the other and we want to do that right on the cage so by snapping from here to here and then letting go of the, the slice you see we've introduced a subdivision here that uh, otherwise wouldn't have been available if we wanted to put a cross hatch to this not unlike the planes strut uh, then I might also add to this snap um, a midpoint and if we came back here and selected uh, that polygon again let's select um, this case it will be both sides because it's now two separate polygons and we could use the slicing plane quick slice and snap from one corner of this um, over to a midpoint or over to the opposite side now, something we have to be careful of here, if you look really carefully, um, you might notice that I'm not exactly on that intersection. So take great care to make sure that you're precisely on uh, the point in question, uh, especially when there's geometries that are on the opposite side that we might be selecting on. We want to make sure that that's not what the cursor is clicking on. Also a good reason to take advantage of ignore back facing. So instead of looking into the modifier stack to gain access to the tools that go with manipulating any kind of low poly model, we can also take advantage of a ribbon across the top of the screen in more recent versions of 3D Studio called graphite modeling. And if you click on the graphite modeling tab, all of the same tools that are found in here are now available in a strip across the top of the screen. You could even choose to have this portion of the interface turned off temporarily so you just have the ribbon and you turn the, uh, the main panel here back on as needed. So it's just a question of um, rolling over the top of all of these various features to discover what corresponds to what you've been using down here. You will notice that we have, once again, the topological features that can be selected. So if we want to move uh, into kind of a face level, I can have that selected. We could select a polygon and then we could begin to slice and manipulate and shape. So for example, uh, we could, you know, choose to bevel something or manipulate uh, some feature of a geometry based on the tools that are available up here. So take some time to investigate um, the tools and features up here. They do change based on topological level. One really nice one that I should draw your attention to immediately is Swift Loop. When that's turned on, it allows you to uh, quickly scrub across the surface of a geometry and find some place where you could introduce a new loop, a new subdivision, and then simply clicking is going to add that. And of course, the closer uh, a subdivision is to an edge, then the more taut the smoothing radius is going to be here. So you'll notice now that with the extra subdivision, this is a little bit sharper and shorter arc as opposed to the more rounded side uh, on the opposite side of the cube. So adding additional subdivisions, increasing their frequency, making adjustments to the weighting increasing on any of the edges that make up a geometry are all going to have some sort of effect on the outcome. 
And once again, take note that all three of these are fundamentally a cube. And if I would restore them back to their former state without the NERMS modifier, you would see that there's no difference between these uh, except for the subdivisions and the weighting.